Just when you think your money can't get better, Mike Anderson walks into the building. We haven't seen Mike for a while. In fact, I think he needed GPS to remind himself how to get here. But anyway, uh, Mike will be on from 12 through to 4 today. I am so excited. It's, it's amazing. You know me, I sort of have a whinge about networking. And I say networking doesn't work. It's boring. People are trying to sell you stuff. I've got a lovely friend called Sue. She was in here oh, a few months ago. She's great. Really, really great. And she said, Mike, you, you know about Christmas lights as well. I know that the guy two doors down always wins a competition. Petition. She says, no, 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 I can get Sheree in talking about lights. Didn't realise who it was she was actually talking about. Sheree Everett, welcome to 101 FM. Thank you so much. And for those that don't already know, like nobody in Australia doesn't know about this, um, <laughs> the Great Australian Doorstep. Yes, yeah, yeah, the Caravan and Camping Travel Show. I mean, that is everybody's dream. I know. So I'm guessing one day your husband woke up and said, do you know what, why don't we just go around, let's go around oh, Australia. I could, and- seriously, I could have killed him. Yeah. He, I had known nothing about it. I knew nothing about it. He retired from football. He said, I'm going to get a motorhome. We're going around Australia. Whatever. And I just ignore him because he comes up with all these crazy ideas all the time. Well, he works in radio, so what do you expect? Exactly that's, that's right. So I was like, radio, let's do whatever. <laughs> we had a newborn baby. The next minute he turns up. He went MIA for three days. I was like, where are you? I'm in Melbourne. And we were living in Sydney at the time. Yeah, yeah. He turns up in this enormous motorhome. He goes, got to be out of the house in a month. He said, we're going around Australia. And I, did, I just remember looking at him and I burst into tears. I said, I can't live in that motorhome. So Series 1 went for six months and I just hated every second of it. And it was hard because I had a newborn. I was going to say, you're one baby at this No, no, stage. but then we had his three other children oh far from his first goodness. wife. And we had a niece and a nephew and oh, we had a house full, a motorhome full. And then though, when I came back after that six months, I just was needed to get back into a house. And I kid you not, within three weeks of being back, I'd be sitting at a set of lights and see someone in a motorhome or caravan. I'd be like, oh, I really want to be where they are. You're going to be stir crazy. It, yeah, and then I was just, I really, after the first one, loved it. Just, you don't realise how lucky you are getting out and travelling around and, and the people that you meet. It's awesome. Well, as you can tell by my accent, I'm not from around here, so everything's new to me. Yes. And, and, you know, we get excited and people laugh at me. I put on Facebook, I post pictures of my birds. We've got lorikeets, we've got cockatoos, I'm, I'm hand feed kookaburras. Yes. And people are going, yeah, and? And? <laughs> I'm from Glasgow. That, you know, we don't get kookaburras <laughs> in Glasgow. It's, it's, but, but this is the most amazing country. And yeah. I, I was chatting about the, to the current Mrs. Bennett as I, it keeps her on her toes yeah. chatting about it the other day saying we would never need to go overseas again you've got no. ah, there's so much here that it's, it's unbelievable you know people say to us you're up to your 10th year of travelling you're going to run out of places to go and I've always said to them I kid you not you will <laughs> never ever ever run out of places to go in Australia there's, yeah. and they are always evolving and changing and you can go to the same place in each different seasons of the year and you see something completely different like it's just seriously you could travel for 50 years and not see the same thing twice. Yeah, and that's that's what's so amazing. And, you know, occasionally we'll do a little road trip and we'll just head up north and you stay in motels and whatever. And you, you're not quite sure where you're going to go. And we had our honeymoon in Cairns and it was great. And yeah. we went up into the rainforest and we went on the reef and you think, wow, and we live here We now. live here, yeah. And, and, and everything is possible to get to by driving. You don't have to fly. No. And the way the rental car companies and the higher motorhome companies are these days, they have vehicles that will suit every budget, every taste, every anything you want to do. It's, it's able to be catered for here in Australia. And you know, we've got friends coming over from the Commonwealth Games and they've already said, yeah, so we're going to do that and then we're going to go out and get good on you. Just go, get He's out going there and it. see yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and even overnight stays now, if you're not if you're not camping or, or, or in a caravan, it's cheap. Oh, it is. Well, the latest craze is, and, and we've actually got it coming up in our next series, is obviously the farmers are doing a struggle in Australia and farmers are opening up their stations for you to go and stay. So you can take a tent or you can stay in the shearers' quarters or you rock your caravan up. Honestly, it's absolutely amazing. You get to go out on the stage station, they go mustering. I mean, I went up in helicopters the other day, I was hanging out the side because they don't have doors. Crazy no, farmers. They don't. But um <laughs> but yeah, honestly, absolutely amazing. And and they do it too for having people to come and visit because a lot of time they don't see a lot of other people apart from the workers that live there. And they're getting to show off their, their farms and plus they're making a bit of money out of it oh, too. That's, that, that's absolutely awesome. Now you were telling me something really exciting about this. Um tell us about the the, the, the iTunes. Yes, yes so we have just uh, last week launched on iTunes globally. So we are the only travel TV show on iTunes. Uh, we're in there with, uh, there's Surfing the Menu, which is like a cooking, a, a travel slash cooking yeah. show. And there's also Fishing Australia, which is obviously all, all about fishing around Australia. But we are the only travel TV show in the world on iTunes. So it's been four years of re-edit after re-edit after re-edit. <laughs> we finally I, I, I got it that. right. <laughs> I mean, we, we run a, a video production company. I know just how hard it is. And people oh, again yes. don't realise, and I'm guessing it's an independent company and you're sort of putting it on and... and yeah, yeah. So we, we go 
through, we deal with iTunes in the States direct and they have really strict criteria. But the thing is you don't, we don't realise, I mean, I'm a Kiwi, but living in Australia, we are very Australian and they keep coming back to us saying it's too Australian. No one would have any <laughs> idea what you're talking about. So we literally had to go and edit out slang words and, and you know, words that we say that we understand. But yeah. no one else, no other nationality would understand what we're saying. It's really funny. Two weeks ago, I'll do a top ten list on here. Two weeks ago, top ten signs are becoming more Australian and I'm finding more slang is actually <laughs> yeah, coming out. I've only been here two and a half years. It's amazing. You yes. know, talk about this Arvo now. It's great. Yes. Um, another thing we want to talk about, and I could sort of chat to you all morning, is about the magic of Christmas. Yeah. Now, I mentioned before, my next door net, well, two doors down, Brian, um, we live on the Somerton Ridge Estate. He nice. won, he's been winning the Christmas oh. lights competition, <laughs> but he starts in June oh. and, you know, he's, he's up on the roof. Right now, he's got 35 reindeers, oh, 40 wow. penguins, a polar bear. It's like a scene from the movie Frozen. Oh, that, that is unbelievable. Well, we, we're going to try and outdo Brian this year, I think. Okay. We've got 150,000 lights. We wow. have uh, taken over the uh, the Heritage Park, which is a historical society in Pimpama. Yeah. So it's just off Rifle Range, Rifle Range Road. And we've got, because they had buildings, so they've got old buildings, little old chapels and little old school buildings and stuff. So it's sort of that old, you know, old world Santa type village. And we've just completely gone nuts. We have, uh, we've got 2,000 statues. We have Santa and Mrs. Claus there. There's the elves in the workshop. It is absolutely amazing. Fake snow for the kids. There's bubble machines. There's a disco that's got these techno versions of Christmas carols. Oh, goodness me. Oh, <laughs> so, this, this is is great. Yes. I'm, I'm, well, I'm so excited. You've actually given us two sets of tickets, which is just fantastic. Yes. Um, uh, what makes me laugh about Australia, and, and you know, you go into Brisbane, for example, and you look in like, Myers or whatever, and there's all this snow, and I'm thinking, not many people in Queensland have seen snow. No, no, Gotta they haven't. Tell you, silver rated. It is. Oh, highly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, as a Glaswegian, I have plenty <laughs> of snow. You have plenty of it, I know. Uh, after an hour, you think, oh, yeah, I'm over it now. Yeah, yeah and, I know. Well, this is, this is what I'm calling it faux snow, because it's yeah. fake snow, so it doesn't, the machine won't let it build up on the ground, so the kids won't be getting wet or anything like that. So it's like a sort of like a foamy snow, and then it, it does dissolve. So it might get about an inch thick if you're lucky, oh, but it's, it's still fat. yeah, the kids will love it. And the thing is, we're talking about families, and you know, we've all had kids sort of growing up, and and it is there's something very special about Christmas yes. lights. Yes. Um, and the first year we we we're coming up for three years now. And the first year we thought, nah, there'll be nothing, nothing like we've got back in good old Blighty. Australia blows Britain yes. off the map. Does it? Bri- oh, seriously. If you went to, if you go to London now, Regent Street, Oxford Street, it's really boring compared boring. to the stuff you see here. Here. <laughs> here they've gone nuts. I mean, again, you've not got just Brian, you've got other people on our estate and they've got these like Santas on, on video and the, the kids oh, walk past yes. and Santa appears and, wa- and, and waves to wow. them. <laughs> well, see, that was our biggest thing. You know, there's so many children that do, you know, that don't have a great upbringing and there's a lot of them on the Gold Coast and it's sad and Pete and I do a huge amount of charity work with the children's hospital and you see it time and time again and it's just not fair and so we didn't we made it as cheap as we possibly can at $35 for a car so however many people you can legally fit in your car and none of your Kiwis put them in the boot like my father used to <laughs> but um but yeah so $35 for a car so you got a five seat it's five people um so if you've got two single mums or whatever jump in the one car and it's only going to be $17.50 each so it's really cheap and it's to bring the kids out to show them the fun and the excitement of Christmas and bring back that happy place that, you know, Christmas is known for. Because, you know, back in my day, obviously I'm a lot older than you, but back in my day, Christmas was magic. And yes. there was a real excitement. Now, dare I say, I sound like my dad, it's become too commercialised. It's way it's too commercialised, yeah. And, you know, and kids get? kids talk about Christmas as in who's got the most expensive present. Yeah, what yeah. did you get? What did I get? Well, you know, I don't. I ban our kids. We've got four children in total. You, you, no one talks about what you got or how much it costs. Who cares? It's the thought that counts. And if you get one present, you know, we are, people see us and think, oh, they'd spoil their kids. Well, we don't. You know, our children have a $150 limit and that is it. That and you is don't it, get yeah. anything more. And and I think to bringing back these sort the, the Christmas lights, we've got Christmas carolers, the good old fashioned with those lovely knitted jumpers on. But Christmas carols and teaching the kids what the real meaning of Christmas Absolutely, is. Absolutely, yeah. because that's been forgotten as well yes. because of, it's been yeah. so commercialised. And I just love the idea and, and say, when our lovely friend Sue told me about this, I said, oh, this sounds really, really great. Yes. Um, and, and just the fact, you know, we don't do enough 
fast families. No, don't you do don't. I mean, I, I'm not going to do it again, but I had such a rant on here last week about schoolies. Oh, I just yeah. went off on one because I couldn't believe that they're hopping between the balconies and whatever. No. And I can't believe as a parent that other parents would let the kids do it. Yes. This is just the reverse. This yep. is let's get the families together. Let's get out there, enjoy Christmas. Yes. Uh, and, you know, make it special again. Exactly. And the thing, one of the main reasons, there was two reasons why we put it together. One of the main one was we went to a street, um, and I, I think it was just on the southern side of Coomera there last year. Amazing. Every house was done. It was that damn dangerous. There were children running. Some people had got out of their cars. Some people were driving. There were kids running in front of cars. And, you know, I said to Pete, it's a great idea, but we need to have it where it's closed off. So we charge per vehicle, but there's a designated car park, which is well away from the lights. You park your car, you get out, and you walk around the lights. That way you can let your older kids run off ahead of you. Um, and, you know, you can keep kids safe. They can run between the little exhibits on there and knowing that they're going to be safe yeah. rather than having to worry about, you know, this, I saw this one lady, she had four little kids on her own. She was that stressed by the end of it. And you could see in the pain in her eyes, like she didn't want to be yelling at the kids, but she needed to keep them safe. But then she wanted it to be fun. And it was just a, you know. Well, we have that. You know, it's in our street, they literally do have coach loads going down. And yeah. you think one child. Just I know. Back, because you can't watch them all the time. No, you can't. And they no. slip out your hand and, and whatever. So I think it's a fantastic idea what you're doing. Um, and, and you know what? I'm going to go up to Brian. I'm going to say, mate, you've got competition <laughs> Maybe now. we should give him a free ticket. <laughs> no, 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 no. Make him pay. And I say, right, this is what we expect in our street <laughs> next, year. next year. But then we don't because I think what you're doing is great and yes. it's safe and whatever. And, and if, just in case anybody doesn't know who Pete is, if you've lived in a cave for the last 20 years, um, it works on another radio station at the same time as Paul Barrett here on 101 FM. And how long has he been on gold now? He's been on gold for six years now. Okay. Yes, yeah. So It probably seems longer. It does. I'm believe you me, it does. But, I mean, oh. that, that early, I couldn't do it. Seriously, he wakes morning. the whole, he's an elephant. He wakes the whole house up. He thinks he's being a mouse. He's not. Yeah. He's being an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I guess when you've got kids in the house as well, it's like, oh, dad's oh, up and, and yes. what, half past three, four o'clock He in gets the up at half past two, oh. and then we're half an hour from the studio, so half past two, and then he has his breakfast, which sounds like he's feeding an army, oh, no. and then he decides to go, and then he'll forget something, he'll come back in, the door will slam three times, then he starts the car and doesn't drive away, and oh, <sighs> Lord. <laughs> Dear, men, what can men. I tell you? <laughs> I know. Uh, it's been, as I knew it would be, it's been an absolute joy, Cherie. I'm so glad that Sue put you and I in touch. Yeah, and definitely. Anything like this, we'll get back in studio. And I'm really yes. excited. So just very, very quickly, great show in uh, Dorset. When's it back yes. on? So it's back on air on the 17th of February. So the new season starts on 7-2 in middle of Feb, and it will run through to June. Brilliant. I shall look forward to that. I'm actually going to, because I know you can get all of the, the old reruns. And, yes, uh, yeah. I want to go back. Get them on I want to go back to season one. Oh. I want to see your face on season one. Were you see pretending that you're loving this? And I'm thinking, nah, she <laughs> no, told me she wasn't, wasn't loving it at all. She re Everett, and she's very, very kind. Of, this is fantastic. We are going to be doing this next week, actually. Uh, gonna be, these will be our big prizes next week. Uh, we've got uh, passes for the 9th of December and for the 11th of December as well. But I'll tell you all about that next week. They are yes. worth $35. Very, very, very very quickly, uh, give us a website, give us yes, contact details. it is. It's magicofchristmas.com.au. Easy. How can you forget that? Yes. Cherie Everett uh, in the studio, and we will have a back to talk about, I want to get the goss. I want to get the oh, inside goss and what really goes on on these, <laughs> on these fantastic programmes. And uh, no, it sounds great. And as I say, we'll be giving these prizes away on the show next week. So there you are. Do we not have the best? It's a rhetorical question. Do we not have the best guests on this show? We do. A couple of weeks ago, we had a band that was on The X Factor, Sheree Everett, here today. It'll be Danny Minogue next week. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay.